Hello everyone. In this particular lecture, we will be talking about the hybridization of uh, carbon. We will be studying what carbon is all about and specifically we will be focusing on hybridization. hybridization and the two kinds of hybridization one is sp3 and the other one is sp2 hybridization before we can move on to hybridization we would first need to really understand what uh, a carbon atom really looks like now here's a carbon atom if you look at the periodic table there you will find that carbon has a proton number or, or an atomic number of 6 and carbon has an atomic mass of 12 which necessarily isn't true because carbon has many different isotopes as well. The atomic mass can be 13, it could be it could be even uh, 14 but if we analyze this carbon atom it has 6 electrons and it has 6 protons and it has 6 neutrons. The number of protons and neutrons, they, uh, the number of neutrons actually, that really doesn't, uh, doesn't re it doesn't really matter what, how many neutrons a particular element, element has. It only changes the atomic mass, the mass of the, of the atom, but it has no effect on the way it bonds and the way, uh, it doesn't affect the chemical reactivity of the element. So an electron is negatively charged and a proton is positively charged. So whenever we're talking about bonding and chemical reactivity and the chemical properties of an, of an element, it's the negative and positive charges that are actually taking uh, part in attracting other atoms and they basically involve in covalent bonding as well. These negative and positive charges are also involved in ionic bonding. Now we'll draw the electronic configuration of uh, of a carbon atom. The carbon atom, uh, if we draw the orbitals according to the increasing energy levels, the, the first shell has only one s orbital. The second shell has four orbitals. One is the 2s orbital and then you have three p orbitals which are 2px, 2py and uh, 2p z orbitals. Now all these four orbitals, these are the outermost orbitals, outermost orbitals. Now these are the outermost orbitals and these are the orbitals that will be taking part in bonding. Now if we start filling these orbitals, the six electrons, two of the the electrons would first like to actually fill the lowest energy orbital first. So two of the electrons are going to occupy the 1s orbital and the 1s orbital only has has a capacity to accommodate two orbitals. All orbitals have a capacity to occupy only two electrons. So the 2s orbital will, is the next highest energy level. So two of the electrons are go, will, will be going into this orbital and then you the 2px, 2py and 2pz orbitals they are present at exactly the same energy level. So the electrons will first like to fill these orbitals uh, and only one electron will go into 2px, 2py and 2pz and once one electron has gone into all these three orbitals only then will a second electron occupy the 2px, 2px orbital but, but in this case, in the case of carbon, there's only there's only, there, you're only left with two electrons, there are four electrons already occupying the 1s2 and the 2s2 orbitals so one electron will go into the 2px orbital and one electron will go into the 2p Y orbital. Now this particular carbon, this electronic configuration, that's this electronic configuration is a carbon atom in its grounded state or the lowest energy state possible for a carbon atom because all the electrons are occupying the lowest, the lowest energy states possible. But when carbon bonds and if we look into, into bonding, let me first explain, explain to you what bonding is all about and why two elements bond. Now, the problem with bonding is that bond formation is an exothermic process. And if you know what exothermic means, it's basically, it means that they, whenever a bond is formed, energy is least. 
Now, since energy is released, we know that whenever energy is released, the resulting compound becomes even more stable. It, it, it goes into an even lower energy state. So the more the energy released, the more stable the compound is. And carbon forms covalent bonds. It's in group 4. If you look at the grounded state, it can only form two covalent bonds right now. One with the 2px orbital. This 2px orbital can share an electron with another orbital and one with the 2py orbital which can share an, an electron with another orbital coming from some other atom. Now the 2px orbital and the 2py orbital, they are half filled. So half filled outermost electrons, they are basically, basically involved in covalent bonding. But there's a problem. Right now, carbon can only form two bonds. In its grounded state, it can form just two bonds. But as we have, we have discussed previously, all these orbitals are in the second shell. Now, if they're all in the second shell, that basically means that all these orbitals, they pretty much have similar energy levels. So there isn't a lot of difference in the energy levels of the 2s orbital and the 2p orbitals. These 2px, 2py and 2pz orbitals, they are present at exactly the same energy level. But the 2s orbital is slightly uh, at a lower energy level but still very similar to, to the 2px orbital. Now since they are pretty much at the same energy level, an electron, if it's promoted, if this electron over here is given a very small amount of energy, it can jump to the 2pz orbital and there will be only one electron left in the 2s orbital. Now carbon, if you look at this carbon, this carbon is now in its excited state. This is called an excited carbon atom. This is an excited state. Now in its excited state, this orbital is half filled and it can form one bond. This orbital is also half and it can form one bond. Similarly, this orbital can also form one bond and this particular orbital can now form one bond as well. So, in an excited state, in an excited state, carbon can form four bonds, which is typically more exothermic and since it's more exothermic the compound form the resulting compound when all these four orbitals start bonding with some other atom for example in CH4 uh, that particular compound would be more stable so carbon whenever it's going to bond it's always going to go into an excited state because there's a trade-off you need energy to um, shift this electron from 2s1 to 2pz1 but the resulting bonding is going to be more exothermic so so overall the carbon atom is going to go into an even more stable state and the resulting compound would even be more stable now let's look how the orbitals are arranged around the carbon atom uh, we've already discussed why carbon would like to actually make four bonds but if we look at the orbitals now this over here is the nucleus of a carbon atom this one let's draw the axis this one is the y axis this one over here is the x axis whereas this axis which is um, coming in going out the page this one is the Z axis. Now you have all these three axes and if I draw the if I draw the orbitals we have the twist one orbital then we have the 2py orbital which is double shaped and if I can draw this properly this is how it's going to look like. Then we have the 2px orbital another double shaped orbital and then we have the 2p c orbital 
notes. So I'm sharing the 2PZ orbital just to show that it's coming in and going out of the page. It's it's orthogonal. It's it's this lobe is coming out and one lobe is going into the page. Now this is how a carbon atom would look like if I draw the outermost orbital and if I start marking what these orbitals are. This one is the is the 2s1 orbital. It has one electron. This one is the 2p y orbital which has one electron. This one is the 2p x orbital which has one electron and this one over here is the 2p z orbital which has one electron. Now what happens when it's bonding? Let's see. For example, this is what is this? This is methane. It's called CH4 as well. It's carbon is bonding with four hydrogen atoms and if you look at the hydrogen atom it only has one electron so its electronic configuration is 1s1 and uh, its shape there's only going to be a spherical 1s1 orbital which would be centered around the nucleus so if four of these hydrogen atoms they approach this particular carbon molecule carbon atom and they will try to overlap. For example, this 1s1 orbital, one of the 1s1 orbital over here, it's going to overlap with the 2s1 orbital, then one, one then another hydrogen atom of one, with 1s1 orbital, it's going to overlap with the 2px orbital and so on, uh, because they all half fill. So let's see, this is one hydrogen atom, it has a nucleus, and this is the 1s1 orbital. The one basically states that there is only one electron roaming around in this particular orbital. Then you have another orbital, another 1s1 orbital, which is hydrogen. This one is also hydrogen. That will try and overlap with the 2px orbital. Then another hydrogen 1s1 orbital is going to try and overlap with the 2pz1 orbital and then finally there's going to be another hydrogen uh, 1s1 hydrogen which is going to which which will try and overlap with the 2s1 orbital so these orbitals they will try to overlap and these arrows indicate their attempt at overlapping and forming a covalent bond. Now when these hydrogen atoms, just note one thing, that these hydrogen atoms have a positive nucleus and this positive nucleus is going to attract an electron from the, let's look at the 2px1 orbital and the, this 1s1 orbital. This positive nucleus over here, it's going to attract, there's an electron roaming around in this nucleus. There's only one electron which is roaming around in this region, this region in space, in this in this orbital. But once this positive nucleus, it starts to attract that electron, that electron is going to stay in this part of the lobe. It won't. It would. It it will. It won't go into this orbital because it will be attracted to this particular positive charge over here. Similarly, the positive charge over here will attract the electron which is roaming around in this orbital. So th that those forces, those electrostatic force of attraction are going to attract these these two nucleuses together. This this nucleus is going to attract the electrons over here. This nucleus is going to attract the electron over here. Now this lobe will become empty. They, the electron over here will not be able to go over here because it's getting attracted by the positive nucleus over here. So this nucleus is now redundant. I mean it's it's non -ex non-existent uh, now. The same thing happens when this positive nucleus approaches this orbital. Previously the electron was roaming around in this entire region of space but once this positive nucleus starts attracting it, so it's going to stay in this particular lobe. It won't go into the other lobe of the 2p orbital and so this particular lobe will no longer be required. It wouldn't, it wouldn't exist because the electron is never going over there. The same thing happens with this, with this lobe. I mean previously it was roaming around in this entire lobe. Now it's going to stay in this lobe. It won't go over there because it's getting attracted by the positive charge over here. And the same thing happens with the 2s1 orbital.